Hey, hooligans, Sam here. You got first world problems? I got first world problems. I mean, honestly, who doesn't? We live in the first world. They're all over the place. Some people don't seem to think they, they have any first world problems, even when they've created an entire public persona specifically to complain about first world problems. <laughs> A while back, I saw this on Twitter. Imagine being a SJW indie cartoonist with the side of her head shaved and dyed an unnatural color, talking about some first world problems bullshit and not realized what a pampered cliche you are. I wondered what this was in response to, but the thing is it wasn't. It was just something he said at random for no apparent reason. The guy's name is Richard Meyer and he created this YouTube channel called Diversity and Comics that's basically the definition of first world problems. He created the channel to complain about Marvel and DC, the two big comic companies, trying to hire a more diverse set of writers that he doesn't particularly like. This is the writer of Iceman. <laughs> two hours ago, he penned this letter. Yup. Iceman is coming to a close. I am supremely bummed out. Bobby Drake was a horrible, horrible person. And the whole book was basically Bobby's first gay ex. So it was Bobby's first gay kiss. Bobby's first gay hookup. Bobby's first gay boyfriend. Bobby's first gay move-in. And I'm sure he's getting, he's getting into Bobby's first gay uh, HIV scare. Bobby's first gay... But it wasn't just that he was gay, is that he was 1990s gay, like a sitcom character, like, a, like someone from Will and Grace. <laughs> you don't regret failure. That is 100% your fault. This is disgusting. This is not how adults act. You should be hanging your head in shame. You should be apologizing. And why do you... Why isn't this your end at Marvel? It absolutely should be your end at Marvel. But it was literally only... I'm not kidding. He got his first pounding in the ass on a trip to mourn his friend's death. At one point, he did describe something that Iceman did in the comic that wasn't about him being gay. But for every one second that he spent on that other event, he spent five or ten seconds droning on and on about pounding in the ass, pounding in the ass, pounding in the ass. Hypocrisy is great for satire, so I retweeted Meyer's first world problems comment with this. Thank God there are street hardened, stable geniuses like this guy and his super original, totally not cliche or pandering third world problems hot takes on why feminists are destroying comics. Now, most people don't heckle comedians because, you know, it's hard to look cool when you're arguing against dick jokes. Meyer, on the other hand, responds with this silliness. These are the people who invented the word rapey, a cutesy, lesser version of rape that requires no actual rape. Huh. I wonder who invented grammar, Nazi. And when I didn't suddenly, uh, you know, hop to and say, oh yeah, uh, feminists use the word rapey, horrible people, then he retweets me with, with this comment. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, actual problems. Did you miss the part where your YouTube channel is themed on complaining about comics you don't like? Wait, no, I take that back. SEAL Team 6 never would have killed Bin Laden if Iceman had been gay. 1990s gay, like a sitcom character. Have you noticed that their stuff is shit and your shit is stuff? I can think of two things he might have meant by the rapey comment, both of which are doubling down on being a hypocrite. He might have meant that because they use the word rapey, they can never be taken seriously. But if that's the case, you can never take anyone seriously because they might have once said grammar Nazi. 
And how would that work in this conversation? You get a pass on being a hypocrite because they do something that I don't like? Oh, he was a murderer. Well, in that case, bon appetit, Mr. Lecter. Hello, Clarice. Or he might have meant, as at least one of his fans thought, that they're horrible people because it trivializes rape. That's undercut by attacking their hair. Yes, yes, they murder babies, I know. But they wear socks with sandals! It's also pretty ballsy from someone who trivializes the Holocaust. How dare you! How dare you trivialize rape, you monster! Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Genocide is hilarious! We really need a world war. We need a world war. We need a world war and a draft. We need high casualties. We need stuff like this <laughs> winnowed out of society. This guy is... Let's look at his picture. We'll get him on a nice artillery crew. He's tragically taken out by enemy counter battery fire. Aha! Aha! There's gonna be a punchline, right? Nice medal to his mom. Never has to explain why he was never married to a woman. So, to be clear, the punchline of your joke is it's better to be dead than gay. I mean, seriously, murdering them is like doing them a favor. What's your encore? So many Jews died in Auschwitz. Hilarious. Now, I know comedy is subjective. I mean, certainly the guys that were giving out wedgies and swirlies in my high school were laughing about it. So liars like Kieran Scheich transpose it to diversity comics once a war that will kill all gay people completely lying and there's no way you accidentally misconstrued that you've been on the internet for how long and you're not familiar with poe's law from wikipedia without a clear indicator of the author's intent it is impossible to create a parody of extreme views so obviously exaggerated that it cannot be mistaken for the genuine article. You have to change your voice if you want people to know you're mocking them. Uh, uh, someone pointed this out. The idea of a war taking out the unlikable people of a younger generation, um, that literally, I, that's like in one of the most famous lines from The Simpsons where Bart's like, we need another Vietnam to thin out their ranks. Cause those liberal freaks go too far. But why can't we just make a law against flag burning? Because that law would be unconstitutional. But if we change the Constitution... Then we could make all sorts of crazy laws. Now you're catching on. What the hell is this? It's one of those campy 70s throwbacks that appeals to Generation Xers. We need another Vietnam to thin out their ranks a little. What a couple of things. You're not 10 years old. Vietnam wasn't a genocide. No genocide has specifically targeted Gen Xers. You described a manner of death for a specific living person without altering your voice. And what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. Oh, you're not a cartoon. Your Honor, I admit, I dropped an anvil on the guy, but in my defense, Bugs Bunny is famous for that. But Meyer retweeted my gag about his YouTube channel, so now his fans start piling on. Brace yourselves for some stupid shit. Marshall Harrison writes, Nice ad hominem attacks on a veteran. Blech. Ad hominem attacks are bad because he's a veteran. Berner Jones writes, Here's an adjective you didn't use. Wrong. You didn't say he's wrong. Wonder why. Oh, so the three of us agree on something. You, me, and Meyer all agree that he's a hypocrite. Neither of you denied it. Frankly, some statements are just too stupid to dignify with debate. 
If a guy says the Queen of England is invading Mars with an army of lesbian clones, you don't demand that guy show you sources. You give that guy a guest spot on InfoWars. What do I do, Lord? Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. This is their plan, people. These are demons. Just like the Bible says, it's basically an intergalactic invasion into this space through people. I, I'm telling you, it's what all the ancients said. It's what they warned of. It's what we're dealing with. They're demons. They're freaking interdimensional invaders, okay? I'll just say it. Make fun of me all you want on CNN or wherever, but everyone already innately knows this. These people are not freaking humans, okay? Hillary Clinton is a goddamn demon. I seem to have lost what this was in response to, but Sequential Warrior writes, Truth hurts, sweetie. Time for you to grow up and put away your childish tantrums. No one is impressed or scared by them anymore. And I was just going to let it go, so I typed a uh, thumbs up into the GIF search on Twitter and picked one of the first images that came up. It happened to be a picture of Kylo Ren. And he responds to that. <laughs> It's just a movie, sweetums. It's not real, no matter how much you wish it were so. Just like your dreams of being oppressed in the West. Oh, Begora, how'd you know I had dreams of being an Irish immigrant in 1880 who couldn't find a job in Dodge City? You put your gender and your condition as the first qualifiers in your profile. If the most interesting thing about yourself are things only a census taker cares about, you are not a very noteworthy or interesting person. I should be taking notes from this guy. The Alpha Bun of the United States. Nationality, species, rabbit, and dick size, alpha, are definitely the most important things to convey in the front of a 140 character bio. Thump responds. Yeah, you should. A cartoon bunny gets more respect than stupid census traits that virtue signal how amazingly dull you are. First of all, no one is virtue signaling harder than the guy who's complaining about somebody else virtue signaling. But yeah, sure, putting alpha in your profile is totally not virtue signaling. If anything, that's modesty. They say that he's a racist. Uh, misogynist, sexist, bigoted, homophobic Nazi. So what better way to counter that than by turning him into an incredibly cute, lovable, fluffy little bunny. And it ends with him swearing on the Lincoln Bible. Ricardo Saracino writes, Samuel seems to be rather childish. Given a second chance at life, he seems to be squandering his blessing by berating someone on Twitter. So I replied to him, and I said, Here's a guy who knows what's up. Instead of berating people on Twitter, I should be following his lead and berating people on Twitter. To which he replies, I don't have survived cancer in my bio like a little bitch. So what he's saying here is that childishly belittling people on Twitter is a privilege reserved for cancer-free people. That and... Cancer survivors are little bitches. Several of them felt compelled to inform me that Meyer is a Marine. He's battle hardened, not street hardened. Yeah, that's the real issue, where he was hardened. You really, you need someone who's seen some shit, someone who knows what it is to kill a man. That's why I'm qualified to tell you that Pinkie Pie is the best pony. Barry had responded to my original post. He's completely entitled to complain about whatever he wants, and you complaining about his complaints makes you into what you are saying he is. <laughs> the, uh, I'm rubber and you're glue defense. Not sure if that works with hypocrisy. When he started saying things like, you don't have any fans, stop pretending anyone else is reading this, four or five of my friends suddenly chimed in and he went quiet. 
Karen was being a little protective of me, saying that he was going after my dreams and comparing it to kicking puppies. So Barry posts a screenshot of my original tweet where I accused Meyer of being hypocritical. And he says, Here's where your boyfriend was kicking puppies. You're on the wrong side of history, Karen. History will remember this event. February 1st, 2018. A day that will live in infamy. Richard C. Meyer was suddenly and deliberately attacked by a comedian on Twitter. We shall fight them on the Twitters. We shall fight them on the Facebooks. We shall fight them on the tubes of you. The day this happened, I'd been experimenting with slogans for my comedy. An elevator pitch, you know? Short, memorable, vaguely descriptive of my work. I've since moved on, but at the time, the slogan in my bio was, I make punching Nazis fun. Having failed to weasel his way out of being a hypocrite, Meyer goes on the offensive. And the best he can do is, He has punching Nazis in his bio. WTF. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm pretty sure you know it's a metaphor, but of course you're going to freak out anyway. It doesn't seem very hard to do that with you. You seem to be having PTSD symptoms from the phrase, Dear everyone. Ah. What? Uh, how do you get cringy in the first two words? After that, it's like his fans all got together and divvied up responsibilities. Look, we really can't have a comedian making fun of him online. So you insult his sexual orientation, you insult his autism, you insult his cancer, you insult his political leanings, you just call him fat, and you five just keep repeating Zero Nazis Punched. Total Nazis Punched by Karen Shake Zero. Zero, huh? You figured that out all on your own, Sherlock? Fighting metaphors are all over our culture. You fight cancer, you fight homelessness, you fight drugs. There's a war on fucking everything. But only when the metaphor is directed at hypothetical Nazis do they get all offended. I seriously doubt they'd have any problem with me saying, I fight SJWs. After all, that's what they're doing. So then Meyer says this. Is it true that you got a degree in respecting women? Because that's what I heard. How could you be so lazy? You get called a hypocrite and your response is, yeah, well I can make up imaginary degrees for you to have. How about doctorate of doo-doo pants? If you're gonna insult me, you have to put some effort into it. You've gotta get into my head. You can't just say whatever random thing comes to mind. I wouldn't try to insult you by saying that you encourage critical thinking because you know it's not true and so it wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't actually be insulted by that. Darthpool137 writes, Please give us the exact number of Nazis you've punched and a brief explanation of how you make physical assault more fun. In quotes, more fun. If that's how slogans work, I really need to get some fucking Red Bull. I reply, This is approaching a joke, but demanding the comedian be completely literal doesn't quite get you there. You need a punchline. Maybe something about how I sell glitter bombs and festive rainbow-colored punching capes. Pool. Now you think you're a comedian? Try being funny next time. I didn't think you were a jokester. I think you were a liar. He probably does that to everyone. What do you do for a living? I'm an accounts receivable. Liar! Pool. Let me restate my original question. Please give us the exact number of Nazis. Oh, that's copy-paste. I reply, A for effort, C for style. Delivery is important. You want to go with something exaggerated, like liar, liar, pants on fire, or slightly less direct, like where's Geppetto? Pool. I'm going to assume your use of nonsense words and attempts at jokes confirm the answers to be zero and you are not. 
Zero, and you are not, and you are not. Oh, not a comedian. <laughs> These people like Karen Shock want you to us to live in this neo Taliban type of future where you can't joke. Guess what? Jokes bring people together. Thank you, Richard. Well said. I asked Sam the same simple question three times, and now he's claiming victory for avoiding answering three times. SJWs don't understand winning. <laughs> hey, I'm not the one going apeshit over a metaphor and, and thinking that this is some incredible Pyrrhic victory. They're like people at a protest with an ironically misspelled sign that says, Get a Brian. Here's the best he could come up with. He needs to check the definitions of satire, comedy, and winning. Yes, the ultimate arbiter of comedy and satire, the dictionary! Saddle, Sasquatch, Santorum. Oh, here it is, satire. Huh, you're right. It doesn't say going ape shit over a metaphor. The first time someone said he was Marine, I was confused and I asked, like, is this supposed to scare me? And Justin Carr responded to that. No, but if you claim you are going to punch a subsection of people and then label someone you disagree with as a member of that subsection, you look pathetic when that person is well-versed in violence and you are an effeminate man-child. You are not punching anyone. Aww, did someone make fun of your friend on Twitter? Was it that friend who giddily and publicly gloats and mocks people when they lose a job? That must have been so hard on you two. I feel so bad for you. Still just in car. How many of those Nazis have you punched? I would guess close to minus numbers. Whenever this guy sees a billboard for an attorney wearing boxing gloves, he thinks the guy literally charges into court and pummels the other attorney. I'm attorney Mike Costello. Call me now. It amazes me that the weakest, most pussy members of society like to be brave and claim violence against non-existent people. Ah, uh, yes. There are no Nazis. Fun fact, the... Uh, National Socialist German Workers' Party didn't call themselves Nazis. Long before the party existed, the word Nazi meant a clumsy, stupid peasant. It was like the word redneck. That's why it was applied to the political party. I'm skipping a few replies with more of his just chest beating. He keeps demanding to know how many Nazis I'd punch. On one of those, I replied with a gif of a woman breaking a record. Justin. Fuck the very unfunny memes. Just more examples of the left's inability to meme. I can't meme, but I want cheeseburger. You need this so badly from a complete stranger. Why invest that much in me? To you, I'm just some a-hole on the internet. No, not at all. I just want to see if you have any principles. You claim you hate Nazis and want to harm them, but I can smell your weakness from here. I smell weakness! I'm like a weakness-seeking missile! I seek it out and I attack it online! Because that's what strong people do! Browbeat the weak! I'm skipping a few more replies. Justin. Sam, I despise this I punch fascists and I punch Nazis from people you know are pathetic loser cowards. My grandfather went out and killed, not punched. Real Nazis, this little prick wants to claim to be the same sort of person he was. Fuck that bisexual prick. You are so not my type. Hashtag homophobia. Ah, uh, no answer to my argument, so let's play the homophobic card. This guy thinks the word card is a magic spell that just makes whatever he just said disappear. Whatever adjective you put between fuck and prick is meant as an insult. You wouldn't say, fuck that knowledgeable prick. 
Yes, my grandfather killed Nazis. Blah, blah. He was a war hero and a warrior. A killer. A fucking hard man. You are a soy boy. What makes you think soy is going to insult me? Because soy kills testosterone and makes you weak and effeminate. Now, if you saw one, would you punch a Nazi? Not hard. Would I punch a Nazi weakly? Well, if your science is accurate and my soy-drenched muscles are weak, then I guess I would have to. <laughs> At this point, the only thing any of them knows is that I use the word Nazi in a metaphor. But several of them are already have already accused me of labeling anyone that I that disagrees with me a Nazi. I've not called anyone a Nazi in this thread, and prior to this, I don't think I've called anyone specifically a Nazi, not even in a joke. So one of them replies to Meyer in a tweet that I was mentioned in to say, actual Nazis punched equals zero for like the seventh or eighth time. And I wrote, that's a given. Why would Meyer punch his allies? Meyer replies, who are literally Nazis, am I right? Aww. You thought that was literal. Bless your heart. It never crossed your mind that I had already stated several times that I'm a comedian? Hmm. Maybe the joke wasn't pro-Holocaust enough for you to recognize. You and your fans set you up for that rhetorical joke by going apeshit over a Nazi metaphor after making pro-Holocaust jokes. It's not hard to understand why you have a reputation for being a colossal asshole. When a guy at Marvel lost a book deal, you decided to throw a party to gloat and mock him, in which you offered a poorly delivered pro-Holocaust joke that ended with a punchline implying that he'd be better off dead because he's gay. This is disgusting. This is not how adults act. You should be hanging your head in shame. You should be apologizing. Getting back to your original comment about first world problems bullshit, that's you losing your shit at a guy whose capital offense was writing some comics you didn't like. And I'm betting that was actually deliberate because I know that you're an attention whore who's rather proud of having the reputation of a cartoon villain. About a month after this exchange, uh, I mentioned it in passing to someone else in a comics chat on Twitter. And within seconds, of course, you told your fans, Sick em, boys! Now die! Die! And I'm not surprised. Here's you bragging that the secret to your success has been trolling and cultivating this asshole reputation. One of the best things for the channel because when you say someone did something awful, a large part of humanity says, I want to go see the awful thing. <laughs> then guess what happens? You try to destroy me and you always end up giving me more followers. One consequence of your asshole reputation and poorly delivered pro-Holocaust jokes is that people are always calling you a Nazi. So now you can't tell the difference between that and a professed comedian doing his job. You know, that reminds me of something. What, what does that remind me of? And there's no way you accidentally misconstrued that. We all have our visions of what an ideal world would look like, including a list of evils we think it would be better off without. I put racism and fascism near the top of my list because of thousands of years of genocide and slavery and the fact that alt-right racists like Dylan Roof have killed more Americans since 9-11 than all Muslim terrorists. On the other hand, you chose to put feminists near the top of your list and they might use the word rapey, so I don't know, it's a tough call, man. So I'll keep doing my punching Nazis thing and you keep doing your thing punching feminists. Hey, you might even have something to look forward to. I'll bet with the Me Too movement the way it is, any day now, Marvel's going to release a cover with Captain America 
punching Hillary Clinton. The funny thing is that I've, I've fostered a very open community where I've said to people, when I say something stupid, tell me, I'll learn. Be a smarty, come and join the Nazi party.